Hello, hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in for the drawing comic stream. I'm going to be watercoloring John Busama's work. Just like yesterday. Um, but we're going to be doing a new page. And this is the page that we will be coloring. Rather, I will be coloring and you will be watching. <laughs> But I do like to say we, because I feel like you guys are involved in all this. So, it's kind of including you in the process. So, we will start with, and probably stick with, the zero. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's change that up. Let's do, let's do a seven because I want to get a little faster at this. It is hot out. So a lot of the water is evaporated. I'm going to squeeze out some of this water here on the tray. And Start with the background. And I'm just going to go right ahead and start <laughs> using a lot of water. from what I remember last time. That brings the tone, an opaque look. And if you look at the original, the yellow isn't, um, isn't quite bright. Now, there are multiple challenges to doing this traditionally as well. I think light is a really important factor. And this is something that I mentioned previously, like when I used to oil paint, that took me a while to take into account. Like, I didn't really think it was that important, or it just never really occurred to me that light will change the tone. Or it's going to be harder for me to judge um, picking the right tone when it comes to mixing colors. I didn't then think that once I would mix the colors and I would come back to it the next day, depending on if I'm using natural light or not. And by natural light, I mean just like light coming from the window. Um, I didn't take into account that it's going to change Q. And I really noticed that when I started working on a skin color. I was like, wait a minute, this isn't what it looked like yesterday. Is it because it's drying that way? And that's also something to take into account. How it dries also plays a role. Uh, when it comes to oils as well, like the kind of medium that you're using. Like linseed oil, I believe, makes, um, gives the tone a more of like a yellowish finish. Just because it is an oil and it, it is a darker, um, once it's dried up, there is a tone to it. But going back to watercolor, it also still plays a really important role. Like for instance, right now, um, if the light is a little too close, then I can't really tell the 
the tone of the yellow. It could be a lot darker, but because the light is so much closer to it and the water kind of reflects the light, it makes it look a lot brighter than it actually is. So adjusting your light source is very important, and that's something that you don't have to really worry about if you're doing things on on the computer. If you're doing it digitally, it's always going to be the same brightness, which is great. So everything kind of has its advantages and disadvantages, like disadvantages with tradition um, with digital stuff is that for me it takes a while to draw the lines that I really am looking for to make because of that like hand-eye coordination delay you know what I draw ends up taking it there's like a slight delay between it being registered on the computer and when I make it so it's it's a little weird so the colors did end up being brighter than I would like them to be and to fix that I'm mixing some white into it to kind of dilute it, to dull it a little. And I am using more pigment than water in this case. I think you, after a while, I mean, it's just similar to like oils. After a while, you just get uh, really good at instinctively mixing the colors the way that you want them to. Because you've done it so many times, you know, it doesn't, you don't even think about it anymore. It's this amazing thing that happens. I also notice the same process happens when it comes to playing chess. Like, I like playing chess and I play it very often. And I noticed that um, months ago, it would take me a lot longer to process like four or five moves ahead. But because I've been playing consistently and practicing over and over and over again, just like anything else, that has become more and more instinctive. Like, I don't really think about them anymore. I've seen these specific moves enough to know what the outcome is going to be when I do this, this, and this. It's just an, another example of just like how that um, learning carries over to other like that focus the determination carries over into other things as well it's a lot a lot brighter than in the original in the original it's like very light yellow whereas this is like a sun yellow. just don't want to go over it so many times because you, as you get, I don't know if you guys can see it, but starting to like clump up some parts of the paper. giving the paper texture. Okay, just gonna leave it alone for now. Might come back to it later once it dries out. Oh, challenge is gonna be to draw, or rather, not draw, but color or hair. Because it is yellow, just like the background. Distinguish that. 
think the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to squeeze out a new batch of yellow. Cap overboard. I think after the stream, we're going to have to do some cleaning. The colors are getting muddy, despite the fact that you could bring these colors back to life with a little bit of water. And I also am noticing that I'm using the 7, and it's doing a decent job. Could it be that the ink brush pen really helped? Because the bristles on it are just as thick, if not thicker actually. Yeah, it's, it's a little thicker. And I've been using this guy a lot, so... Could, could have um, helped transition into coloring as well. As you guys could see, I get carried away with like little details, so... I've, I've kind of been a fan of very fine points. Conan in the original was looking pretty red. I want to say I actually got it. Nah, it's, it's still more orange than it should be. As you guys can see, he's he's in that red hue. It's like orangish red. I also noticed that the less 
white I have on the brush, the more chances of opaque results. Meaning, like the blacks can see, um, can be seen through after I put the colors on, which is really what I'm worried about. Every time I make a stroke, I'm like, oh no, is it going to cover this detail that I really want to maintain? So I think white is the culprit. Think of it as like white out, right? It, white out can't be opaque because that's what it's for. It's to white out any, any mistakes. So that's kind of how this one is working as well. The watercolor is working in that direction. So anytime I got like a bit of white, it gives like the blacks a milky tone. Which I am fighting against. I do not want that. I want those details. He's got a little sunburn on his uh, shoulder right there. And by the looks of it, that's in his future in this issue. He's gonna be getting the sunburn. And it's gonna be pretty grueling. And we'll get to that panel pretty soon. Call this a, a bit of a spoiler alert, but not really. skin tone a bit of a, a rest and we're gonna move on to his hair I think the other reason why it's clumping up so much of the paper is because there's more water on the brush. You know, it's the bigger brush, it absorbs more water. So more water gets on the paper, whereas if I'm using a smaller brush, there's less of it. So this advantage of using big brush if you're not using the right paper. Because I think this, even though this is like great paper, it's able to handle multiple mediums. It doesn't have really high rigid texture, which I don't like when it comes to pencil work. It's still not tough enough to deal with watercolor. Acrylics, sure. Watercolor doesn't seem to be its favorite. from the first go. No, there's probably like a little more yellow there. But I think at this point I might be switching over to a smaller brush because, because really look at look at how much it's clumping up the paper. Not a fan man. Okay, we're gonna stop complaining about it 
and just do that. We're going to switch to a zero. Boom, zero. Let's see if we get better results. Too green. Danger zone. Trying to spread the color as quickly as possible before the paper absorbs all the water in the color. Pretty decent actually, it got close to the original color. And I'm still waiting for that effect that I had on the previous panel with with his um his coat the king's robe it turned out so well kind of waiting for that to happen again and take note of how I'm going to make sure to clean out the brush because even though this is watercolor even though the colors are pretty opaque they do uh, muddy up eventually and don't really want that. So part of me that wonders if like I could do something similar to like the India ink vials that you guys saw if you didn't. You guys should check that out. It's in the previous streams where I talk about how old school um, coloring techniques were back in the day. And they used to use like India ink and mix all the colors in the vials so that when they would sit down to do each panel and, and they had like all the reference ID <laughs> IDs um, listed there, they could just look at the vial see compare the reference ids to each other and just pull it out and start coloring and not have to worry about like did i mix it right did i color them properly and they were just right there you can pull them out and i'm wondering if you could do the same thing with watercolor like 
could premix all the all the common common colors. There's like a hint of like I wanna say this is violet, so I wanna I'm gonna say there's like a hint of purple. Perfect. So before I jump into the skin tone, I just want to lay down all these colors and then focus on it. <laughs> Time really does fly. I, I feel like I just started and we're already like halfway through the stream. Well, like the saying goes, time flies when you're having fun. And in this case, that really is the case. This green is challenging. I'm getting like, like looking at her, looking at her boob. Can't tell. It's like it's not a forest green, and it's like um, I don't know. There's like a little bit of blue in there. I want to say. So let's see if adding a little blue is going to get there, but it's going to make it darker, so it's not quite it. We might have to open up a new color. Which one? Which one? I'm going to go with this one right here, emerald green. Weasel a little bit because I'm gonna be doing some cleaning after the stream. I'm gonna have to wash out all these colors. And I'm probably gonna have to have a better technique with it. You know, I have this like I have this palette here. I'm gonna be very careful because there's some water on there, but I just have to get better at the technique. Like if you could see it this used to be white. And that's the problem right there, like I need to um I need to change my technique and how I dip the brush into these colors maybe help preserve them longer or just squeeze out even smaller amounts of uh color for just each session. And I think this emerald green, yeah. And that was a good one. It's a good pick. Just some water to dilute it. It's a little too bright. I'm going to see if I could change that and add some white. Even more white. It's 
really lay that white on the brush. Uh, maybe too much. Yeah, no. And as you guys can see, it's slowly starting to take some of them details slightly paved about gonna add some yellow and a hint of blue could actually fix that rather than adding more layers maybe we can just dab away some of this yeah it's a little difficult to nail down this color huh it's like it's bright, but it's, it's not, I'm not sure how to save it. I'm really wrestling with this one. We're going to let it dry. I'm going to let it dry. And I'm going to do skin color now. Now I'm going to wrestle with skin color. Clean out the brush. So none of that stuff is on there. Use the rag to make sure it's all off the brush. And I'm going to mix some white with it, a little yellow, and some red. Now I'm really going to have to next time um, squeeze out the primaries first. Because my red isn't really a red, it's like a crimson red. And that's that's getting in the way of um getting some tones that I'm looking for. She doesn't have lipstick on, so I'm not gonna do red lips. That's that's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't think that she's out there. Out in the middle of nowhere. 
finding lipstick somewhere to put on. So it has to be like a a pinkish tone. To differentiate it from the skin color. I think it's somewhere there, but <laughs> because of the water, it's kind of like smearing all over her lips, which isn't good. And it's making it look like she actually did have lipstick on. Let's see if we could like mix it in with the skin tone. I finally got the mixed, um, the right mixed colors. I'm kind of like speed throwing to make sure that I get enough of that color on there before, before it dries out and I have to mix it again. feathered shoulder things that are about the same color as Conan's shirt. But I'm giving it a slight different tone. Now what I also noticed is that even though the blue didn't cover up a lot of the blacks, it did turn some parts bluish. So I'm going to try to wipe it away. Maybe add some water to do that. I think next, I don't know if I'm going to do next panel or next stream, I'm going to try to find pages that don't have any inks on it, put the colors on it, see how that works out, and then ink them. I was hoping that it could be opaque enough for it not to be a problem with watercolors, but... Not too happy with that. It'll be fun to experiment like that anyway. 
see what the results are. I believe in my other streams, I did mention how it's important to study backgrounds and um, to see what sort of things are being drawn to fill up the panel because you don't want it to look too boring. But at the same time, as you could see, sometimes it's better to just have exactly that. Just solid colors, nothing there, kind of conveys an emotion. And it does look cool, like I do like that. I just don't think that um, not studying backgrounds and what is being drawn in the background should be masked with solid colors for every single panel because that gets boring and, and it makes them kind of empty after a while. But just mixing all these different ideas is, um, is a good approach. Sometimes having solid backgrounds other times putting details in the backgrounds like you saw in the other panels when um when i was drawing comics there were bricks and and walls and these uh, crossing lines from the ceiling that kind of added more uh to the panel made it look more cozy and that that was kind of like the panel itself it was like these uh robe wearers these cult members i guess they were in this cave so you do want to convey this like kind of cozy environment you know cave isn't way too spacious or in that case or in that scene it just it, it wanted to portray this like hideout spot They're lurking in the shadows, you know, so kind of helped to bring out that element in the panel. Just trying to see and compare the panel and um, figure out if I'm just ready to move on to the next one. Should I make some adjustments? Like, I don't like that I covered up that right there. That's not cool. And I'm also not happy with the color for her boob. I'm gonna see if I could rescue it somehow now that it dried. Or slightly dried. see if I could add more white I'm 
I'll say it's better than before. But still no bueno. Is that it? Is it closer? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say it's a little closer. And I'm gonna add... I'm kind of afraid to add this blue. I'm gonna try a different blue and see if that helps because... The ultramarine blue has a bit of darkness to it, whereas if I add maybe... Yeah. That's it. Should've used this blue the entire time instead. Which one was that? That was coat. No. It was this blue. Cerulean blue, I want to say. But I could be wrong. Well, that's it for this panel, I think. I'm pretty sure it's done. For now. I could always have done better. But I think I'm ready to move on to the next panel. And I will get started on it, but I don't think we're going to have enough time to actually... To get through it. I will be back tomorrow. Same time, same place. To finish up these panels. So feel free to connect on social media. Hit the subscribe button so you get a notification when I'm going to go live. Talk about the stream, talk about some of the um, struggles that you're having in your process, some things that you've learned, if you've done watercolor as well. What are some things that you currently like and don't like in the process? What's taking you a bit to understand? as you're exploring the medium. Share your thoughts. I would be interested to read them and also mention them in the next stream.
and this is what I was um, getting to, like, if you, the red that I currently have is more like this than the red that you see here. So for now, I don't want to squeeze out a new one because I'm going to be cleaning the whole palette out tonight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the horse for now. Whoa, too much. Too much chocolate. I don't think I would have ever thought that I would come to say that. Because I am a huge chocolate fan. But yes. Yeah, did it again. My desire for chocolate is coming out through this paint. Just getting too much of it. But I'll say this, I don't like, first of all, I don't like any animal products, so milk chocolate is gross. It's so gross. Um, I do really like dark chocolate. Like somewhere in like the 70 to 80 percent. I'd say more to like 75. It's excellent. This music kind of reminds me of like Conan the Barbarian, the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger for some reason. Could be like the gongs in the background. If you guys haven't seen that movie, that one's fun. I really like that one. Like the Red Sonia, the one with, um, I think it also has Arnold Schwarzenegger in there as well. And the synthesizers give, kind of give it that like 80s feel. Which is, I think, when that movie was made. I mean, it could have been in the 70s, like late, late 70s, I want to say. Like 79, maybe, or 78. But I could be wrong. Could, could have been in the 80s.
All right, guys. Gonna cut it off here. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I enjoyed this. I hope you did too. And as I mentioned before, um, sign up if you enjoy this content. Subscribe. You'll get a notification. Check out the social medias. And I will see you tomorrow. Same time, same place.